If you own a 10th generation Honda Accord similar to this one and you've been experiencing misfire issues or you're dealing with a cold start where it's got a very rough and shaky idle, then this video might be for you. So this might end up being a longer video, but what I wanna do is break it down into different chapters and hopefully you can just check out the chapters on YouTube and figure out what might help you the best to fix your problem. But what I'm gonna do is cover my experiences with this car since I have driven it for over 100,000 miles Tell you a bit about the symptoms that I was experiencing. Then I'm going to go into great detail and spend quite a bit of time showing you exactly how I replaced the fuel injectors on this 1.5 liter turbo Honda Accord. All right, so I'm going to start with the symptoms again that I was experiencing with this car. The largest one was really that cold start rough idle that I had. Now I've been dealing with this for probably nine to 10 months now, honestly, trying to figure out for sure what the problem is and what I should actually do about it. And initially it was just a little bit of a rough enough idle where I thought maybe I could change the spark plugs and that would fix it. But of course it did not. And eventually this rough idle just kind of kept getting rougher and rougher as I went. But the good news was I could still drive the car just fine. Pretty much as soon as I put in drive, started driving down the road, it seemed to act pretty normal. That is, I would say, until about dealing with this rough idle for about a month or two with no other real signs, like it didn't have any check engine lights that I could pull codes for or anything else at the time. But eventually one time it did throw a check engine light and not only did it throw a check engine light, but it kind of made my car go into this limp mode where I couldn't even hardly accelerate much past five miles per hour. It wouldn't give me much throttle. It wouldn't let me really drive the car. Luckily I was close to home and I already had an OBD2 reader so I could run the codes and see what it told me and try to troubleshoot better from there. Don't remember the exact code I got at that time. So I did eventually buy a new coil on plug and then tried to install that. And after I cleared the codes and everything, it actually did run fine. It still had the rough idle, but you know, I could clear the check engine light and drive the car as normal. Now this particular issue where it kind of cut power and stuff to the car really only happened once. However, after that, I did continue to intermittently receive these check engine light codes. And I did come to realize that sometimes uh, the reason or the way that these codes would come on is if I gave the car probably more than like 40 to 50% throttle. If I was accelerating a little bit heavy, sometimes then it would throw this check engine light. Luckily, it must've been some sort of different code or different thing that was happening inside the ECU because it wouldn't be cutting power, but it would then throw all these check engine lights on and then I wouldn't be able to use my cruise control, wouldn't be able to use other features on the car until I basically re-cleared that uh, check engine light. So researching online with this other issue, I came back to two main things. One was either it's carbon buildup on the intake valves or it's just the bad fuel injectors themselves. But making a long story long here, I tried to order these fuel injectors three months ago and I could not get them. For whatever reason, they're very hard to find, uh, but I finally made the determination that I was just going to change the injectors and hope that fixed my issue, but I couldn't get them. So those were all my main symptoms. Just wanted to let you know what I was experiencing. But also I feel like that I couldn't get the right parts for three months was a key issue here too. And also a reason I want to tell you like my temporary fix or my temporary way of solving the issue I had. And of course, I don't really recommend this. Uh, you want a, a, to fix things right. But with this temporary fix solution, I was able to con continue driving my daily driver car, you know, whenever I still needed it. So of course, the OBD2 scanner that I got, I recommend buying one of these no matter what. It works for any car that's like uh, 2006 or newer. And what you can do with an OBD2 scanner is run the codes just to help you tr better troubleshoot what the issue is with your car. And then you can also use it to clear those codes. Now, of course, a very important distinction here is just clearing the code. All you're kind of doing is telling your computer, hey, here's a little reset, to pretend everything's fine. You didn't actually fix anything really, but the way that some of these cars work nowadays, that's all you need is to tell it that everything's fine for a little while just so you can drive it somewhere to take it and get it fixed. It's kind of meant to keep you from doing more damage to your car. However, I'm sharing my experience because this was my experience. I was able to clear the check engine light and just keep driving my car like normal and 
as far as I can tell, I put at least 10,000 miles on it since I've been having these issues and, you know, I didn't blow it up. So just my personal experience, I'm sure some people will call me an idiot for, for doing such things, but I know some people out there just really need their car to get to and from work and can't always afford to fix it right then. So sometimes uh, in my particular case, it didn't seem to be the worst thing to just clear the code sometimes when it came up so I could use my car as normal. The other thing I did, and this is again what took me a while to figure out, is the partial throttle or just not accelerating too hard, especially when the car was colder, seemed to really help me from ever even throwing those codes. That's usually for whatever reason that I feel like these fuel injectors get tripped up. They're either blocked just enough from carbon buildup or there's something going on where they're not delivering just the precise right amount of fuel. So then your engine doesn't like it and it throws a check engine code. And also one weird trick that worked for me, after I first started up the car, I would always just put it into drive or into reverse right away. Because for some odd reason, the shaking I was experiencing at an, at an idle would go away or get a lot better as soon as the engine seemed to be under a bit more load once I shifted it into gear. So those are my three main tips. Get an OBD2 scanner, uh, go light on the throttle, and don't let it idle in park. All right, so what are all the things I tried to do before this? Well, I did also get a, a code once for a camshaft position sensor. So I did buy a brand new camshaft position sensor. I think it was for the intake side. So I swapped out that position sensor. It was pretty easy to do. I did that, but of course that fixed nothing. I put all new spark plugs in it, of course, make sure they're gapped properly, do all that stuff. But I put new spark plugs in it. That's probably worth doing either way. I tried fuel injector cleaner. I tried running the stuff you add to your fuel treatment into your fuel tank. I tried doing that. That did not help. Just different fuel additives. Although I will say I might try to do this fuel injector cleaner stuff a bit more often now because of the issues I did have and hopefully to make it more of a preventative thing. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, I did buy one brand new coil pack. And not only did I buy a brand new coil pack, I swapped some of the coil packs around just to try to see if I could follow the misfire. So like if it says cylinder three is misfiring, you take the coil pack from cylinder three and put it on cylinder four. And then if for some reason uh, your misfire was on cylinder four, well, then you're kind of following that coil pack around. And in that case, it probably was a bad coil pack. But in my case, uh, it wasn't a bad coil pack. And then one other thing I did was adjust my valve lash. So I had to remove my valve cover to do this. And the reason to check your valve lash is if these can potentially tighten up and if the valve lash is too tight, uh, I've heard that could cause a misfire. So I adjusted and checked my valve lash, but that didn't fix my particular issue either. So those are all the things I tried to fix before I was like, all right, to heck with it. I'm just putting new fuel injectors in because that's what seems to be an issue a lot of people are talking about. So for all the parts you need, of course, I can list them on the screen here. The one thing that is still a little unsure about for me is some of these part number swaps and changes they made. So as for the parts needed, I can give you the part numbers I ordered here on the screen. And hopefully this is like sorted out a little bit more now um, after this is produced. So maybe you can get a better idea of exactly what you need. But it seems like the old part number used to be the 16010. And they changed it to the 06160, which very close. But I believe like that's the kit. It comes with a kit. It's not just the injectors. It also comes with that high pressure line. And I think they package it that way on purpose. I think they want to make sure people don't buy these injectors without buying the actual high pressure line. But that's just my guess. But then you also see like the injectors I'm holding up when that I got have a different part number on them. It's almost it's very close to the old part number, actually which again, maybe makes sense that the old part number is still representing just these fuel injectors, but they wanted to replace that with the new part number that made you buy the injectors and the line. I don't know. Either way, you need the four fuel injectors, the one high pressure line, the four intake manifold gaskets, and the one throttle body gasket. And the part numbers of everything I specifically ordered are up here on the screen. And there is quite the laundry list of tools you kind of need to do this job, and it will take quite a long time especially if you're not an experienced mechanic. But if all you want is the quick description of how to do this job, I'll let you know that you need to basically relie relieve the pressure of this high pressure system. So, cause you're gonna have to remove your fuel line, of course. But before you can get to any of your fuel components, again, you do have to remove your intake manifold and to remove your intake fan manifold, you need to remove your throttle body. To remove your throttle body, you need to remove the upper intercooler pipe. To remove the upper intercooler pipe, you need to remove your battery. And if you're gonna clean off your intake valves or clean your intake ports, you're gonna also have to have a way to 
crank your engine over, you know, so you can make sure those intake valves are closed. So that's the quick, uh, short and dirty version of it if you feel like you can take on this job without a step-by-step -step tutorial. But now I will go in uh, step by step and walk you through what I did. But of course, before I do that, I want to preface anytime you're working with fuel, of course, it's dangerous, it's flammable. If you're not comfortable doing some of this stuff, then don't do it yourself. So ideally, if you're watching this video, I'm just helping you figure out that one step or figure out that one little thing that you weren't sure how to do. So do anything in this video at your own risk. Again, you're working with fuel. Be smart, um, wear safety glasses, watch out for anything that's flammable. And otherwise, just take it to your dealer or take it to your local mechanic and have them fix it for you. But to start this job, uh, every step I will cover, of course. So we're going to open our hood. So we're going to go inside uh, the car, open up our hood, and also open up our trunk. And the reason we open up our trunk is because there is this fuel fill filter or funnel is a better word, I should say, uh, that we're going to use. So we're going to put this funnel in our gas cap, as you're supposed to do to relieve pressure, or part of the step to relieve pressure in the fuel system. Next, we're going to open up our hood and set up our hood on the prop rod here. And now we're going to look to the right side of the car where this fuse panel is underneath the hood, because we need to remove uh, the fuse that would keep the car from starting up because we want to just crank the car and have the fuel pressure um, go down. So uh, this is the fuse we're going to remove or the relay, I guess I should say. This top relay here is what we're going to pull out. And once that pulls out, you should be able to crank your car over uh, to relieve uh, the, the fuel pressure. You're going to crank it over. It's going to start and run until it dies. So I'm not an expert with this direct injection stuff, but uh, from my understanding, that's what you're doing is you're relieving the pressure in the system. So when you go to open something, you know, there's not just fuel squirting all over the place. Next, like I said, we're just going to remove our battery right away as well to get that out of the way. It's going to make it a lot easier to work on uh, the car. Of course, be smart. Be careful when you're touching the positive connection. Try not to ground it on anything else because that wouldn't be good. So we're removing the positive connection here. I believe this is all 10 millimeter stuff. And then we're going to remove our negative connection as well. There's a little plug-in on the negative connection we're going to unplug before we uh, take uh, that nut off. And basically anything else that prevents you from uh, taking the battery out, we're going to have to remove. And then there are two 10 millimeter uh, nuts again that hold the battery tie down in place. And then they're kind of like J hooks down, uh, down on the bottom part. So you look for those J hooks, give them a little turn, and then you should be able to pull those J hooks out. And now your battery tie down is out of place. Now you should have enough room to lift your battery out, but there's this protective piece around it that I lifted out first, just to make it easier to then grab the battery and lift out our battery. There's also a little plastic battery tray down in there. You can take that out right away as well. So I'm just going to remove uh, this hose here that you could probably don't have to remove it if you don't want to, but this was just going to be in the way the whole time um, if I didn't remove it. So I'm just going to uh, remove this hose. Uh, a tip for these hoses, if they seem stuck for you, is try to get them to spin a little bit before you pull. If you're just trying to pull them straight off without kind of breaking them free first, it's going to be very hard to get them off. So I always recommend just trying to give them a little bit of a spin to get them to pull. And then eventually you can help use something like a screwdriver to give you some leverage to pull it off. Next, there were some coolant hoses where connected to our upper intercooler pipe, I'm gonna call it. Uh, there's a pipe that plums air from your intercooler up into your, your throttle body. And there's just one little nut on there holding these in place. Uh, so we're gonna remove that. It's gonna give us a little bit easier time uh, to move that intercooler pipe out of the way as well. So those uh, heater hoses uh, is actually what I should be calling them, I believe, um, are what you needed to uh, get free there. And next, I'm importing to uh, this clamp that holds uh, the upper intercooler pipe to your throttle body. So we're going to remove, there's actually two clamps up there. Um, you can loosen up both of them if you like. Uh, you may, should only have to do one, um, but I loosened up the one uh, that's closest to our throttle body, as you can see here. So I'm loosening that hose clamp up. And then there are two other bolts. Uh, there's kind of a mount uh, that holds on that upper intercooler pipe and kind of helps hold it in place. So we're going to remove those two bolts as well so we can pull that piping away from our throttle body. 
Once those two bolts are out, you should be able to then pull that upper intercooler pipe off. You're just gonna take a little bit of force to pull it free, but you should be able to pull it off. Watch out for that part of the battery tray that's kind of right up against it. Uh, you gotta kind of lift around that a bit as well. But your main goal is really just to get it um, off the throttle body. Honestly, maybe you could leave it on the throttle body too, but it's gonna make it harder to change that high pressure fuel line later without um, not having as much room to get in there. And it'd probably be harder to get that uh, throttle body off either way, I think, if that intercooler pipe was still on there. Next, we're going to move on to this bracket that's up top. This bracket kind of uh, holds, it's holding that throttle body in place. There's one larger bolt on top that we're removing first. And then after that, I'm going to show you these two other bolts um, that bolt um, right on the throttle body, if I remember correctly. Um, we're going to remove those two bolts as well and a couple of hoses or a hose that goes above it as well. So there you go, there's the bracket, I remove that, and of course the hose that was on top of it as well. Just a good practice, if you're trying not to lose bolts, I recommend you try to put the same bolts back in the same place you took them out. Just might make it easier going back together. And then this kind of electrical box with these wires that runs uh, up here is kind of always in the way. You don't actually have to fully remove it. I wish I could have got it out of the way just for you guys to get a better shot, a better view of everything. Um, but it, it can kind of stay there, but just letting you know that it, it's up there. Next, I'm taking out this uh, foam piece here that is basically like a protector, I believe, for this um, high pressure um, valve uh, thing for the, uh, the fuel high pressure pump. And now we're gonna move more towards the uh, back uh, of the car on the passenger side. And we're gonna start removing things that are connected to our intake manifold. Because of course we need to remove our intake manifold to get to our fuel injectors. So a couple vacuum hoses, again, use that trick where you just try to squeeze them a little bit, get them to spin, and then you should be able to pull off these two vacuum hoses on this side, change angles a little bit, but now you can see both those hoses and anything that's plugged in back there, for the most part, you're gonna plug in anything or unplug anything that's going to your intake manifold. And then where this clip goes in, just showing you here how you can squeeze these um, to release them to get some of these other mounting places released. And again, basically anything connected to that manifold, we're going to remove it uh, from one, one side or another of that intake manifold so we can lift it off. And we're gonna go back to the throttle body side, uh, just giving you a shot here where you can see the throttle body, you know, is this shinier um, uh, silver part uh, bolted to our plastic intake manifold. So there are four bolts holding that in place that we're gonna have to get to, two in the top and two in the bottom. Uh, the top are a bit easier to get to than the bottom. Probably need some swivel sockets and some extensions uh, to get to those bolts. But again, I won't bore you with uh, how long it took me to do this whole job. I'm gonna speed it up and just try to give you tips on how to get it done. Again, extensions, swivels can be your friend for sure. Just trying to show you where all those bolts are that you need to remove. But again, should be four of them that you remove from the throttle body. And again, I kind of followed a different uh, guide from someone else doing this, but I think the reason you actually just want to remove these bolts um, and leave your throttle body in place is there are other hoses that are actually harder to get to, I think, that run uh, coolant and stuff through your throttle body. Um, so there's other things where it, it's probably easiest to actually remove your throttle body from the intake manifold than it would be to try to keep the throttle body on the intake manifold and lift them all out at once because there's other things connected to that throttle body that you'd have to remove. Um, however, maybe if you've done this job yourself or you know of a different way, just comment, let me know. Uh, maybe it would be easier to, to do it that way and leave the throttle body on the intake manifold. It uh, looks like next we're removing a uh, plug-in, uh, this uh, electrical uh, wire just where, where it clamps on. We just squeeze that to pull that out of the way. And next we got this fuel line here that we need to remove. Um, so you need to get this one uh, clamp off that holds it in place. Then you should be able to kind of tip it up a little bit. And then there's this plastic cover that goes on it that you kind of need to tip up. And then you should be able to kind of twist it around uh, to get it off. So this is uh, just some sort of fail safe, I think, just to make sure it wouldn't accidentally come off. But here you can see I'm twisting a little bit and then it should just slide up and off. And again, I apologize, some of this is hard to see, but uh, my hand's in the way, but I'm just basically squeezing both ends of this and then pulling that fuel line free, uh, and then it should come off. Again, hopefully you're wearing safety glasses in case any other excess fuel or anything um, would be squirting out of there. And we're just gonna get that fuel line up and out of the way. It's now just a little better view, so you can see where that fuel line was running to, and now you can see this is our intake manifold. 
and there are three bolts and two nuts holding this intake manifold on. So of course we need to remove those three bolts and two nuts. But before we do that, we're gonna remove this other foam insulation type thing that is underneath the intake manifold. There are two clips at the top here that we're gonna squeeze the sides of to get that get them free. And then we're gonna reach our hand down below and then there's almost like the parts where you're gonna pull it. It's got this piece where it kind of does a, a clamp where it pushes on um, like a like a little pipe uh, where it kind of clamps onto these C clamps, I guess. But you'll see them better as soon as I get this piece out here. I'll give you a shot of what those look like. Basically, you just got to dig your hand down in there and then you should feel kind of a, a piece that you can pull, a plastic piece that's on that foam. There's two different ones that you can reach down, grab and pull, and then it'll be free. So there you go, now that I got it out, you can see those two different pull pieces that uh, you need to uh, pull off. And then the C-clamp parts on the other side. All right, now we can start removing the bolts that hold our intake manifold on. Top ones are pretty easy to see, and actually the good news is there are two on the bottom that are kind of hard to see, but they, they do line up perfectly with some openings that you can see from the top. So here's the shot from the top, just so you can see that when you look in between this part, you're actually looking at that bolt that's on the bottom side, and you can see I'm spinning that one free. So there you go, as I said, three bolts and two nuts holding this in place. And we're gonna go ahead and try to make sure we got everything out of the way so we can get that manifold, intake manifold up and out. There you can see the orange pieces are is our gaskets. We're gonna change those later. I left some parts of it on the manifold where I could connect, disconnect it from other areas. And here's a shot of our dirty, dirty intake runners. They were definitely pretty dirty. And then below that is our high pressure, you know, fuel rail and uh, fuel system. And on this side, close to the throttle body, this is actually where that high pressure fuel line uh, connects so that, that we got a new line there that we're going to change. So, of course, we need to remove uh, this old line as well. And then a little shot below, this is where the injectors plug in. So you're gonna have to unplug uh, all four of your fuel injectors down there. Just trying to give you a shot of what that looks like. Next, a specialty tool I had to buy just for this job was one of these stethoscope type cameras, just cause I wanted to be, I wanted to be able to see how dirty it actually was in there with my intake valves um, and those intake runners. It was uh, still a little bit hard to see um, just because again, it, it's just a weird angle. Vision is a hard, hard thing to do with all this. Um, but then I did of course clean out. So I'm just showing you some of the gunk I cleaned out. I made sure my intake valves were closed. Again, I linked to a video down below um, if you wanna get more info about doing this yourself. If you wanna clean the intake ports yourself, you can watch a different video to give you more information how to properly do it. Um, but I soaked them in some valve cleaner uh, of course, again, making sure that the, the valves were closed before I added this valve cleaner and before I started scraping anything because you're really trying to avoid actually getting any large debris you know, into your engine, which if your intake valves are open, that stuff is basically falling right um, into your engine. So just a pre-warning on that. I'm just going to you know, let you know most of what I'm doing here is really showing you how to change your fuel injectors, but um, you can take it to a shop. Uh, you can get what they call media blasting or walnut blasting. That's that's a really good way to clean out your intake ports and your intake valves as well if you want to go that route. So I'm not showing you exactly how I did that whole process, but I did do some cleaning on my intake ports and intake valves. Next, we're going to remove uh, this heat shield, uh, this other metal heat shield that was down here towards uh, the front of the engine. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. Um, I did all my intake port cleaning and stuff before I removed my fuel injectors just because I didn't want any other anything else open and exposed while I was kind of trying to clean everything up. Next, we're going to go to the other side of this uh, fuel rail, and we're going to use uh, what I believe was a 19 millimeter wrench uh, to loosen up that high pressure fuel line. It's a pretty short line. It's, it's not that long, but we're going to uh, loosen up that line on both sides. And then one of the other biggest pain in the butts of this job actually is kind of getting back in place. This bolt, there's a bolt that holds that high pressure line in place. Um, that uh, is a real pain to get to. Um, so I'm going to show you that as we come around to the other side of the car here. It's not the easiest thing to see or show on camera, but there is one bolt uh, that holds the bracket on to hold that fuel line in place. So we're gonna use some extensions. We're gonna use a swivel socket. We're gonna get in there and get that free. It's not the hardest to get loose, but getting it back together, getting it back on was a real pain for me. 
but here's the top side of where that high pressure fuel line connects so again we're going to get in there with a wrench and loosen up uh, this side of that fuel line again counterclockwise we'll loosen up everything so of course we loosen that up and uh, get both of those ends of that high pressure line uh, loose and then we can go to remove uh, that one pesky bolt that holds it in place. So we're gonna sneak in there and break that free. And that is the one bolt that holds it in place. So once both ends of are, are released and that bolt is out of there, you should be able to remove your old high pressure uh, fuel line. And there it is, just giving you a shot of what this fuel line looks like. Next, we can finally do what we came here to do, right? Just replace our fuel injectors. Easy as that. So we can finally uh, remove these bolts holding this fuel rail in place um, and holding our fuel injectors uh, down. So we're going to walk around. This is one area, too, where I wouldn't recommend just removing two of the same bolts um, for one injector at a time. You treat this like something that you don't want to bend um, and by that I mean just keep slowly working your way from one bolt to another um, so this can kind of slowly release and push its way out but I'm jumping ahead of myself honestly too before you get there there is the plug-in on the other side of the fuel rail as well this was also a little bit tricky I'll just say that there's this rubber portion um, that makes it harder to to see this plug-in uh, what worked for me is just to kind of roll this rubber piece back and then I could see a little bit better at what I was trying to actually squeeze um, to release this plug-in. Um, but there is a plug-in on this other side of the fuel rail just above the alternator that you're going to want to remove as well before we actually uh, continue to remove the rest of our fuel rail. But now that we're back to that fuel rail again, what's actually nice about this too is there's some bolts uh, and some studs. The studs can help you know line things back up later. Um, so again, release those. Uh, I'd walk them out a little bit um, evenly. And then uh, after that, you're going to have to wiggle things around, give it some force to try to pull this uh, high pressure rail out of place. Again, always hard to film. Cameras moving all over the place. Uh, but trying to give you the best shot I can and the best lighting I can to actually give you a, a good view of what this looks like. But we were able to, of course, pull off our fuel rail here. And you can see what that looks like. And now just giving you a shot once that fuel rail is out of place. You can see these fuel injectors are here. They're still plugged in. We're going to unplug those fuel injectors. And then there's clips on there as well that aren't really doing anything anymore because those clips kind of uh, keep that are going between the injectors and the rail but uh, those clips are there as well don't worry if you order new injectors they should come with new clips if you do happen to lose these old clips so of course go through and unplug all your fuel injectors and then you just need to pull them out but of course again easier said than done Pulling out the fuel injectors themselves was pretty hard to do in some aspects. I really had to get on there with some grip, um, wiggle them around a little bit uh, to get them free to pull out. I'm showing you exactly what this fuel injector here looks like, um, but I couldn't give you the best view of me struggling with them to pull them out. But just know they don't come out super easy. And also here's just a shot of how dirty it looked, um, the buildup, the carbon buildup on the end of this fuel injector. And... From what I gather, these injectors are pretty finicky with just needing a precise amount of spray. Um, so here's all four of them. After I pulled them out, you can see just how dirty these uh, are. And I think this I think this is actually the main cause of what my rough idle was right there. But it could be a combination of the injectors just getting bad themselves, and it could be a combination of those intake valves being dirty. So I can't say 100% for sure. All I do know is that after doing this job, it did fix my rough idle issue. So now we're back to all the new parts that I mentioned earlier, and of course we're going to unpackage them and get them ready to be installed. And I don't care where you bought your injectors from, I always recommend checking old parts compared to new parts. So take a look at your, look at your fuel injectors, make sure your old ones look just like your new ones and nothing looks too out of shape. I will also say with these fuel injectors, I did notice that like this top... The top o-ring itself seems fine but just below that o-ring there's this other piece that kind of has this little cut into it and at first i thought maybe one of them was damaged but they were all that way so i'm pretty sure that's just the way they come so i was okay with that all right so now we cleaned up our fuel rail a little bit and now we're going to get our fuel injectors ready to go in and just another shot of our dirty injector compared to our clean new one 
So I like to use a little bit of new engine oil um, and you just put a little bit, a dab of that oil um, on the seal, the part that side that's going to push into the fuel rail. So I'm just gonna dab a little bit of oil and rub it around there just to have it easier to push into place. I do believe you don't want to do anything on the other side though, that, that Teflon side that actually pushes into the cylinder head, uh, you don't put anything on there. What we're gonna do here, of course, is get all four of our fuel injectors in place and push them into our fuel rail. So one by one, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on that seal and then push them in place. Next, we got our clips that we're going to put in place as well. So uh, you're gonna see that there is a little notch for them to kind of fall into. And you'll also see that on the side of the injectors, there is a flat spots on the side that they kind of ride on to. So again, one by one, just putting those in place and then giving you a fairly good shot. Hopefully you can see how they sit in place. Um, you can get a pretty good feel for how, how they should sit in there. I, I would just make sure kind of that those side pieces, um, if those side pieces are flat on that flat part of the injector, you kind of know that they're, they're sitting in there like they should be. And of course there is basically that one indent part to kind of let you know that you put them in the right way as well. Next, we got this high pressure rail um, that it had this foam part around it, of course. So we're gonna take it off of our old uh, high pressure, um, sorry, I said rail, high pressure line. Um, so we're gonna put it off, take it off the old line, put it on the new line. And this line came with some polythene glycol. I don't even know for sure how to say it, um, but it came with some stuff that it wants you to put um, on the threads before you tighten it. So we're gonna, of course, follow these directions if they came uh, with with your you know fuel injector kit, but I'm putting them up here as well, just so you can see that this is what, what came for me to follow these directions. And then they also have different procedures on how to actually to follow the order in which to connect this um, high pressure line. And they basically just want you to start at the top and tighten it up to that pump first, and then tighten up to the fuel rail on the bottom, and then uh, put in that nut that I talked about that's a pain in the butt uh, that holds it in place uh, when that one bracket and get all those loosely started first before you torque them all in place. So here we go. Now is the time to put our fuel injectors back in place. Uh, so of course we're going to remove those protective uh, covers that were on there and then we're going to slide down in here and get our best view that we can to line all these up. And if I haven't said it five times already, uh, one of the hardest things with this job is strictly visibility. You are working in a, not a super tight spot, but just a spot where it's very hard to see what the heck you're doing all the time. Um, so again, take your time, try to line these all up. Um, you should have those guides uh, with that fuel rail, um, you know, that there are, there's two studs sticking out. So those should kind of help you a little bit, but of course you're gonna have to get your hands down there and make sure that those uh, fuel injectors are lined up and pushing into the holes of the cylinder head uh, like they need to. And once you do that, you should be able to start uh, the nuts on those studs that are sticking out so you can get those nuts started. But otherwise, you're going to have to kind of keep walking your way in uh, to slowly bring these in. Just like when you kind of remove them, um, I wouldn't just tighten one up right away. You don't want to do that. You want to slowly walk them in, probably starting from the inside, then working your way out. So I basically did as much as I could by hand first, and then I switched to my ratchet, uh, of course, and then I kept doing that same thing where I kept working these in slowly uh, just to pull them into the head. So just be careful while doing this, of course, you just wanna make sure that those fuel injectors are in place uh, as they should be. If something seems to be going really tough and not tightening up, uh, then you might wanna take a second second glance at it, make sure um, it's going like it should. It shouldn't take a whole lot of force. You should be able to just tighten these up rather easily and they should just kind of keep slowly pulling in. And uh, torque specs for the fuel rail is about nine foot pounds uh, from what I gathered. Of course, do your own research, uh, double check and see if you can find those torque specs yourself. But nine foot pounds is what I found for the torque specs for the fuel rail. And then once you get to the intake manifold, torque specs for that are about 18 foot pounds. And once we have our fuel rail torqued down, of course, we need to plug in our fuel injectors. So we're going to plug in all four of the fuel injectors next. And now we're back to that heat shield that we removed. So we're gonna put that heat shield back in place. Remember to do this before you put your intake manifold on, otherwise it's gonna be a bit more of a pain in the butt to get to. So 
go ahead and put that um, heat shield back in place once your fuel rail is tightened down and your fuel injectors are plugged in. Next is that pesky high pressure hose. You need to kind of finagle it around uh, to get it in place. It's not really the easiest thing to get to. It's not the easiest thing to film. Um, and honestly, this was, you can't tell quite yet, but this is when it was getting to be dark outside for me. And it was getting to the point where I was calling it quits uh, for another day of working on this car. So I apologize in advance for not actually showing you all of the install of uh, this hose. Uh, but again, uh, if you ordered the same kit I did, the new OEM kit, it probably came with some uh, other directions on it. Um, but you should be able to get it back in place. Make sure you used um, use that stuff they want you to add before you tighten it up. We should be able to get in place. Um, there's torque specs for that as well. You can uh, look those up so you can make sure you torque that uh, line to the right torque specs. And then of course that one pesky bolt, uh, make sure you put that bolt back in that holds the bracket in place. So again, sorry I didn't show that to you, but now we're gonna move on to prepping our intake manifold. So of course I cleaned up the intake manifold the best I could. It was also a bit dirty with some of that carbon buildup, but it doesn't stick as much since this is just like a plastic intake manifold. But the main thing we're gonna do here is replace the four intake manifold gaskets and those kind of just pull out of place and then push back in place. Nothing too tricky to swapping out those gaskets, but again, just change them all. And then of course, while we have the intake manifold out, we're gonna go ahead and change that throttle body gasket as well, which is pretty much the same, works the same as the intake manifold one. Should, be, should just be able to pull out the old one and then press the, the new one in place. And here you go, here's just a shot of what the intake manifold looks like if you needed to see it for any particular reason. So now we're gonna go and reinstall our intake manifold. Uh, it should uh, fall in place pretty easily. It might be a little tricky to get it uh, in place initially, but of course there are those studs uh, sticking out that should help you line everything up and get it in place. Uh, you may just wanna watch for that one hard fuel line uh, to the side there. Mine end up getting a little bit bent uh, some at some point. Um, I'm not sure when it actually happened, but um, just watch for that too while you uh, put your intake manifold back in place. And of course, once it is in place, you should be able to put on a nut or two on those studs and then also get your other bolts started. Uh, per usual, I recommend trying to make sure everything will start, get everything threaded before you really try to tighten up uh, any one particular bolt. But then once you have them all started, you should be able to get them all kind of hand tight and then walk your way around, uh, tighten them up kind of one by one and uh, utilizing the torque specs. And the torque specs I found for this intake manifold are 18 foot pounds. So after you've torqued all those intake manifold bolts, we're gonna move over to the throttle body and reattach our throttle body to the intake manifold. Again, four bolts here, two on the top, two in the bottom, same bolts you removed, just put those back in place. Similar fashion, I make sure you try to get them all started a little bit before you kind of try to tighten them all up. And once the throttle body is bolted on, you can put that upper intercooler pipe, that charge pipe back in place. So we're gonna slide that back over the throttle body, tighten up the clamps that hold that in place as well. And also watch for this one bracket again that holds that uh, intercooler pipe in place and uh, that has two bolts that hold that bracket down. Uh, so we're gonna get those started uh, a little bit too before we tighten up uh, these throttle body um, clamps. Next, we're gonna move back to this heater hose bracket that bolts on uh, to that pipe, uh, that charge pipe again. So we're gonna line that up in place and of course put that one bolt uh, back in place and uh, tighten that down as well. Now back to this high pressure pump up here and this protective cover that, that goes around it, this foam piece, uh, we're gonna put that back in place as well before we set this bracket back on that we took off. So here's our bracket with that one larger bolt towards the front and then the two smaller bolts towards the back. We're gonna go ahead and drop that in place and again, get those bolts started a little bit before we tighten them up. And then there's a hose that kind of runs across the top of there too. We're gonna be mindful of that hose and reconnect that in the process as well. I know you can't see very well uh, while I'm tightening these, so I'm gonna give you a better shot from the back side here where you can just confirm, you can see these two bolts uh, for that bracket and the bracket curves up and then that top bolt is there. And of course we reattached uh, the hose that kind of runs along with it as well. And while we're down here, we're gonna just reconnect this uh, electro electrical uh, wire connection here. Um, the bracket, I should say anyway, the piece that holds the, this wiring harness in place. So we're gonna slide that back on, kind of pops in place. And now we need to continue to connect everything that we disconnected from the intake manifold. So we got a few vacuum hoses here on this side of the car. We're gonna slide those back in place and then put the clamps back in place to hold them on. 
any electrical plugins, of course, that you removed, you should be able to plug those back in. It should be pretty self-explanatory where they go. It should kind of go right back uh, pretty much to only one spot where they plug in. And then we got this fuel line that we need to reconnect here. And this fuel line just kind of pushes in place. Once you have it lined up, it should kind of just push on and latch on. Uh, you should kind of hear it snap in place. And then there's a little holder on top that kind of holds it down. So we're going to snap that back in place too to hold that rubber uh, fuel line in place. Next, this foam like insulation piece again that we removed, we're going to put this uh, back where it was as well. You should be able to get that down underneath the intake manifold. And then I believe I just popped those top pieces in place first because those were easier to see. So you could pop those pieces in and then those other more bottom side pieces. You should be able to feel around a little bit uh, to line those up because it they, when you kind of you have to push those towards the the engine a bit. Um, so you have to push those ones in and then you should kind of feel them as they snap in place. But go ahead, re reinstall that foam insulation piece that was underneath your intake manifold. This other bracket here, I don't think I showed removing that bracket that's on the firewall. It's kind of a protective uh, bracket. I took that off just so I can get better visibility while I was working in there. So if you did remove that as well, now you can go ahead and install that bracket back in place too. Of course, any other uh, vacuum lines, anything else uh, that you removed. Again, this one you maybe didn't remove at all, but I'm putting this larger line back in place as well. And now we can put our battery tray back in place. So we put our battery tray down, uh, put that insulation surrounding it back in place. Uh, the battery tie down, hook those J hooks at the bottom, and then just tighten up uh, the nuts uh, holding that battery tie down in place. And of course, you're gonna reconnect your positive and negative battery terminals as well. And then we're gonna pop back in that fuse that we removed. So the car should start up again once we wanna start it. And that'll be about it. Now it's basically the moment of truth. And I'm just gonna have you listen to what it sounded like when I first started it up. So of course it had to crank a little bit to build up that fuel pressure, but then it did fire up and then it ran pretty good. Uh, of course, double check uh, when you do this. Now is uh, the time to really check and make sure there's nothing leaking. Um, peek around, make sure there's no fuel leaking. Of course, if there is, shut things off immediately. Um, you're gonna wanna double check that high pressure line that you tightened up. Uh, you're gonna wanna see as best as you can back where those fuel injectors are. Just make sure there's nothing uh, dripping or spraying. Of course, you want to really double check your work here since you just reconnected fuel lines. And that's it. That's the entire job of swapping fuel injectors. I will say I did this uh, job about three weeks ago now from the moment I'm recording this voiceover and it my car has been fine. Uh, it did fix the rough idle issue that I was experiencing. It did fix the issue where I couldn't uh, accelerate heavy without throwing a check engine light. So all that stuff has been fixed. The one minor thing I'll say I'm still kind of dealing with, but it doesn't bother me as much is is like when I come up to a stop sign and I'm holding on the brake, uh, I can feel the car just kind of be a bit shaky. Not sure why it does that. It's a little, it is what it is. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't feel like as much of an issue as I had before, of course, with this misfire, with the check engine lights and all that stuff. So just letting you know that that is the one thing that I still currently experience after having done this fix. But I do think the fuel injectors were the main issue with this fix. Um, but of course I did, you know, clean out uh, those intake runners as well, clean up that carbon buildup off the intake valves as much as I could. I think that helped, um, but I'm not sure which one for sure fixed my issue, but I'm willing to bet it more so was the fuel injectors themselves. But that's about it for this video, guys. I really hope you found this helpful. Um, but of course, I'm just a guy on YouTube who likes to document what I do. So if I did anything wrong, if there's an easier way to do something, please comment in the comment section to let me know. Check the comment section too before you start doing some of this stuff. If there is an update or if someone had a different way of doing it, you might have some good information down there too that you can uh, look at before you actually dive into this particular job. And also, if you want to help me out, of course, typical YouTuber stuff, if you give it uh, a like or a thumbs up or five stars, we haven't done stars in forever, have we? But you know, whatever, any of that stuff, uh, subscribing, and that always does kind of help out the channel. 
And also let me and other people know if you experience these same issues, if you watched, you know, my symptoms section, if you experienced the same thing, um, if you, your accord was doing a lot of stuff like this, let me know. Or if it was something a little different, that was your solution. Uh, if your solution was doing one of these other fixes I tried first, that'd be cool too, just to let everyone in the kind of accord community know uh, what potential fix might work for them. But as always, this is Paul from Boosted Films saying thanks so much for watching.